Jeremy, I want to turn to Democratic presidential candidate, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Last year, Guardian columnist Owen Jones questioned her about the use of drone warfare. You're a loving parent. What would you say to the loving parents of up to 202 children who have been killed by drones in Pakistan in a program which you escalated as Secretary of State? Well, I would argue with the premise, um, because clearly uh, the uh, efforts that were made by the United States in cooperation with our allies in Afghanistan and certainly with the Afghan government to prevent the threat that was in Pakistan from crossing the border, killing Afghans, killing Americans, Brits and others, uh, was aimed at uh, targets that had uh, been identified and were considered to be threats. Mm. Uh, the numbers about um, potential civilian casualties I, I take with a, uh, a somewhat big grain of salt, because there has been other studies which have proven there not to have been uh, the number of civilian casualties. And last October, on NBC's Meet the Press, Chuck Todd asked Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders about his position on drones. What does counterterrorism look like in a Sanders administration? Drones, special forces, or, or, or what does it look like? Well, all of that and more. Uh, you, you would, you're okay with the drone? Look, using drone is a weapon. When it works badly, it is terrible and it is counterproductive. When you blow up a facility or a building which kills women and children, sure. you know what? It, not only does it do us, it's terrible. But it's, you're comfortable with the idea of using drones if well, you think you've isolated yes. a, an important terrorist? Yes. yes. So that that continues. Yes. And look, look, we all know, you know, that there are people as of this moment plotting against the United States. We have got to be vigorous in protecting uh, our country, no question about it. All right. That's Bernie Sanders before that Hillary Clinton. Jeremy Scahill, please comment. Well, I mean, you know, first of all, um, you know, Hillary Clinton is uh, is one of the sort of legendary um, Democratic hawks in in modern U.S. history. Um, she's, you know, she's what I, uh, you know, like to call a cruise missile liberal, where, you know, they they believe in in launching missiles to solve problems and show they're tough um, across the globe. Hillary Clinton, while she was Secretary of State, uh, really oversaw what amounted to a, a paramilitarization paramilitar of some of the State Department's. Uh, uh, divisions and uh, and was the main employer of the private contractors that were working on behalf of the U.S. government, um, and was one of the the key people in uh, the horrid destruction uh, that we're now uh, in, in creating the horrid destruction that we're now seeing in Libya because of of her uh, embrace of of regime change. Uh, but Hillary Clinton on these issues is sort of uh, you know an easy target because uh, you know she she is so open about her. Uh, militaristic tendencies, uh, but Bernie Sanders, in a way, has has been given a, a sort of pass on these issues. Uh, recently, at a Democratic town hall meeting, Bernie Sanders was asked directly about whether or not he supports the kill list. Uh, the the actual term, the kill list, was. Uh, was used uh, in, in an interview with him, and he said that the way that Obama is currently implementing it, he supports. Uh, you know, Bernie Sanders goes after Hillary Clinton all the time for being, you know, a regime change candidate, and he's right, and blasting her for her alliance with people like Henry Kissinger. But let, let's be clear, Bernie Sanders in the 1990s w was a supporter and signed on to uh, legislation that was authored by Donald Rumsfeld, William Kristol, and these notorious neocons who created the disaster of the Iraq invasion with Democratic support. Bernie Sanders signed on to the, to the key document uh, that, that the legislation that was created as a result of the Project for a New American Century demanding that Bill Clinton make regime change in Iraq the law of the land. Bernie Sanders then voted for that bill, which, again, was largely authored by Donald Rumsfeld and the neocons. Bernie Sanders then uh, supported the most brutal regime of economic sanctions uh, in world history that killed hundreds of thousands of Iraqis. He supported the bombings in Iraq under President Clinton, uh, uh, under the guise of the so-called no-fly zones, the longest sustained bombing campaign since Vietnam. Uh, Bernie Sanders uh, was about regime change. Bernie Sanders signed on to neocon-led uh, legislation that made the Iraq invasion possible by codifying into U.S. law that Saddam Hussein's regime must be overthrown. So when Bernie Sanders wants to uh, hammer away at Hillary Clinton on this, 
Go ahead. You are 100 percent right. She's definitely the politics of empire right there. But Bernie Sanders needs to be asked about his embrace of regime change, because the policies that he supported in the 1990s were the precursor to the disastrous war in Iraq that he hammers on all the time without ever acknowledging his own role in supporting the legislation that laid the groundwork for it. Glenn Greenwald, I'm going to give you the last word on this. You, too, have been writing about these candidates. It's, uh, it's actually kind of amazing. There's nobody with a more adept skill at being able to just selectively concentrate on some things while ignoring unpleasant things than the Democratic partisan. I mean, Jeremy's right that Bernie Sanders has been given a pass, but that's because Democrats have largely chosen to ignore foreign policy as part of the Democratic primary, because they simply don't care. They only pretend to oppose wars when there's a Republican in office, and, and doing so can lead to partisan gains. So Hillary goes around the world vowing to get even closer to Netanyahu, to take Israel, our relationship to Israel, with Israel to the next level, refuses even to talk about Palestinians like they're human. She is responsible for one of the worst disasters of the last five or six years, which is the NATO intervention in Libya, and obviously supports President Obama's bellicose policies and wants to escalate them. She criticizes him for not being aggressive enough. And yet, Democrats um, just simply pretend none of that exists. They don't care how many people outside the borders of the United States are killed by a Democratic president. And so, Bernie has gotten a pass unjustifiably and hasn't been asked about the things Jeremy just described, because Democrats collectively, with some exceptions but more or less generally have decided to ignore all of the heinous things that Democrats do outside of the borders of the United States, because paying attention to them reflects so poorly on Hillary, and they just ignore things that reflect poorly on her. And Donald Trump, today a key primary uh, could de determine whether he gets the uh, nod to be the Republican candidate for president in Indiana. Well, I mean, I just think it's, in, in some sense, um, Washington, D.C., not the United States, but Washington, D.C., is getting the exactly the election they deserve. These are the two most unpopular um, presidential candidates ever to run, I think, in 30 years. They have the highest unfavorable ratings of any nominees in decades. The only thing they're able to do to one another is try and be as toxic and nasty and destructive as possible, because everybody has already decided, more or less, that they're so unlikable. Um, and so it's going to be the opposite of an inspiring election. It's just going to be two extremely unpopular people trying to destroy the other on both a personal level, backed by huge amounts of money and serving more or less the same interests. Um, and I think the two parties and the establishment leaders in, in Washington and the people who support and run that whole system have gotten exactly the election that they deserve. Unfortunately, Americans um, are going to have to suffer along with them. We have to leave it there. And I want to thank you both for being with us. Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Glenn Greenwald and Jeremy Scahill, author with the staff of The Intercept of the Assassination Complex Inside the Government's Secret Drone Warfare Program. It's out today. And that does it for our broadcast. Um, I'll be speaking tonight uh, in Atlanta at the First Iconium Baptist Church, 542 Moreland Avenue, South week, uh, Southeast. Then on to Washington State, Spokane. I'll be speaking Wednesday night, Olympia Thursday, Seattle Friday, Mount Vernon Saturday, then Eugene and Portland, Oregon on Sunday. Check democracynow.org. Special.